Francois Declee is suing Sean Stewart, his former client, for unpaid personal training sessions, an unpaid loan, and lost wages. Francois? Yes, Your Honor. How are you? Good, thank you. Who is this? My wife, Rebecca. Hello. Rebecca, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. All right, Francois, tell me why you're here. I'm a trainer. I, uh, that's what I've been doing for many years. I'm a martial artist. And uh, one friend of mine uh, brought me to, uh, to a house where I met my wife here, Los Angeles. And uh, so I, he said to me, I have a, maybe a client for you in the car. Could you, would you talk to, him, to her? It was a her. I said, yeah, of course. So I'm t I'm, uh, he put me on the phone in the car. I said, hi, hi, my name is Kimberly. Hi. I have no idea who Kimberly was at the time. And then she asked me to come uh, to her house the next day. So I went to her house. They said, who, uh, who are you here to see? I said, I'm coming to see Kimberly Stewart. And as I'm saying Kimberly Stewart, I realized where I was. I said, oh, that's the daughter of Rod Stewart. They have a gym there in the house, and I start training her. Then as, as I was training her for maybe a year or so, then I, I used to see Sean there. And then uh, eventually one day he says, Zav, I want you to train me. I say, I, I would love to do that, to, uh, to train you. So then, uh, you know, we make the deal at the time to, to start training Sean. So then I start training Sean at the house over there four times a week. Is that true? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Turn around. Put your arms down. Yeah. Go ahead, Francois. Yes. We, we made a deal. He paid me 20 sessions up front mm -hmm. at a time, mm -hmm. and he always paid me on time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, stra we keep training all the time. You know, four times a week goes fast, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I give him my billing for the next 20, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he said, well, you have to call the management company. They're going to pay you. So I, I, uh, my wife actually sent the invoice to the, the, the management company, and normally they send me a check the next two to three days following my invoice. And then one day, uh, you know, he, 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 he started to be build a lot of uh, uh, money. So I was saying, Sean, I'm starting to worry. You know, it's a lot of money. I mean, I you know, I want to get paid. He said, don't worry, Sean. As I, I said, I will pay you. Okay. All right. So you first meet the defendant's sister, and then you get him as a client. Yes. What arrangement do you make? Do you have anything in writing with him? No. We just made the same arrangement I had with his sister. I train you four times a week. At, uh, I'm charging uh, the, this amount. Okay. So we agree together. And, and, and there was a billing on, on, a, on a regular basis. After 20 sessions, he paid me and gave me a check. Okay. So your wife, Rebecca, is the one who's doing the billing. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So, Rebecca, talk to me. Do you send a bill? What happens? Uh, we usually do an invoice. It depends on the clients. Some clients pay per day, per week, two weeks or an invoice. In this case, it was an invoice sent mm -hmm. out and letters sent to the management company. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Sean, you meet the plaintiff mm -hmm. through your sister. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You decide that he's going to be your trainer. Yes. All right, and what, what, what happens? He starts training you. You pay him for 20 sessions. Yeah. We were training for about, about a year, right? A little bit more. What happened was um, he kept on billing the, the management company did you tell and them to build a management company? Yeah. Okay. I think that's how we were doing it usually, yeah. and they were paying the bills. I mean, it took a couple of days because they're pretty slow. Over are there. you are you in theater or no, in acting? Why? No. Why? Because why would the management pay for your personal training lessons? Because it's a management company that manages all my money. Ah. Not a management company like, like a management it's company. Your, it's basically yes. your accountant, your bookkeeper. Yes. Yes, All right. Do you, he does do shows, though. He was recently on Celebrity Rehab, so he does do some sort of entertainment. Were you on Celebrity Rehab? <laughs> yeah, I did that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Well, it's not like nobody knows. I know. How, how you doing? You all right? Doing very good. Good. Good very for you. Good. What, what was the issue? Alcohol, drugs, what? Alcohol. Yeah. yeah how long right. are you sober? Um, almost a year now. I think. Really? About, yeah, close to a year. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you. Good for you. All right, so you're trying to keep physically fit. Yeah. Right? Okay. And you've got this great trainer. Mm hmm And you have no problem with his training. No, no problem. He's an amazing trainer. Is he? Yeah. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> so why don't you pay Yes, him? Sensei. Um, it, what happened was, it was... I guess I started, I didn't, went through a fa part where I wasn't making enough money at the time. And then I think I paid him, I paid him, I paid you some of it, right? Yes, you did. And then me and my friend Jared started training together. And I brought him, brought Jared to you as a client. Yes. And I think you were charging us both at the same time, right? Yeah. 
but that I was never aware of that. I told you that once, remember? No, I thought Jared was going to pay. I usually, I usually, what happens when usually when trainers train two people at the same time, usually one person's paying for it and the French is coming along. But no, no, that's no, inaccurate. No, no, that, is that the I've case? Never, I'm no, going to testify for you I've right never, now. I've, I've never, I've never, I mean, for me, what I've known is that that's usually what happens. Did you have a discussion with the plaintiff saying Jared's paying, therefore I do not have to pay? No. What happened was, I was like, Jared's going to, okay, I was paying for Zob. He was, it was going on my bill, right? Mm -hmm. Jared wasn't paying anything at the time mm -hmm. because he was training for me. Then Jared started picking up the sessions and paying for them. Yes, no. Is your friend Jared, yeah. I give him two free sessions mm -hmm. training with you. When he came to the house, he tried me. Mm -hmm. Then okay. he, started, he wanted to t start training with you and uh, me as a trainer. I charge him as well. All right. D are you continuing to bill the management company, Rebecca? We stopped billing the management company. Give That's me an idea of a bill. Yeah. Let's see something. We Let's have see some, some evidence. evidence. Many times the, his mean. friend would train with Xavier in his own. So mm -hmm. his friend would pay his share, and then Sean should pay his share. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So since December of 2007, you had not been paid, and in September, you wrote a letter. What took you so long to write the letter? He owes me $6,857. When he was training you uh, from December of 2007 until August 7th of 2008, were you working? Not at the time, no. Okay. So for all that time, your defense is you thought Jared was paying him? I was training with Jared at the time. Right. And he was training with me when, I was, when, the, when the bills were getting set to Boulevard Management. You but see when what, the you bills were getting sent to Boulevard Management, were they, were they to cover Jared or just... No, no, no. no. Jared has his own billing. He always paid me as well. As well. He so knew about you have it. no problem with Jared? No, never. Yeah, this is new to us. This okay. is new and this is inaccurate. Right. No, okay. All right. So <laughs> you think you owe him money? Yeah, I own, I own money, but not as much as, as How much I do you think. think you owe him? How much do I owe you right now? <laughs> <laughs> Six no, million. No. no, Sean, so focus. Me? Look at oh. me. The question is, what do you, as a defendant being sued, think you owe him? If every defendant turned to a plaintiff and said, how much do I owe you, then I wouldn't even need your version. I'd just take his version. Well, the reason I'm asking how much I owe him is so I can know how much I think I oh, owe so him. Oh, so you could like, cut it in half? Yeah, cut, cut it in, in half. Court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Francois. Yes, Your Honor. What exactly does he owe you? He owes me six thousand eight hundred and something, fifty-seven dollars. No, I don't. I paid you three. I paid you three thousand five hundred. Oh, no, no, sorry. See, see it's what I'm talking about, no, Your Honor? No, no, no. He's up to some funny business no, around here. He owes me five thousand dollars. Five thousand even? Actually, four thousand two hundred. Four thousand two hundred. Yes. You're Which one is it? Answer. Your Honor, he's at the total amount is four thousand two hundred dollars. He's asking. That's what what Sean owes. Then there's wages. He's asking the court to cover. Now, Francois, yes. I don't know if you're familiar with this concept, but there is something called mitigation of damages. And what that means is that if you are providing a service for someone, whether it's a, a personal training or, you know, whether it's renting to someone, at some point, if the person is not paying you or reimbursing you for your services, you have an obligation to pull back and not allow the damages to be so high because it's clear he's not going to pay you. I mean, he's, 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 you know, a nice kid, but he's not paying you, so at some point you have to stop training him. Can I explain why, Mr. Your Honor? Sure. <laughs> In the past, we had the same kind of dilemma between me, me and him. Mm -hmm. And uh, his dad actually covered the, 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 the payments. So his dad gave me a check for a lot, a, lot, a lot of money at the time also to be covered for my training. So when that happened again, mm -hmm. then I let it go because, I mean, I love uh, Sean. I mean, mm -hmm. I was not in a situation that mm -hmm. I was in the house every day. You know, I know the dad. So I said, of course he's going to cover my, uh, my So why my wouldn't training. you talk to his dad? Your dad's dad Rod Stewart? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So why don't you call his father? Well... I tried to call the house many times. What so about Kimberly, the sister? She has nothing he to did, do with it. But he, I do believe, Your Honor, that he has spoke to a few people in the family. Plus, the management company, as I would continue to call them, would say there was no funds available. And we kept getting stories from Sean. He made a sub substantial amount of money when he was on Celebrity Rehab. And he spent that money on other music equipment. And at that time, he had the bill, and he knew he could pay Xavier. 
But Xavier did stop training them when the bills kept going over to the management company and him. His word, he takes his word. He's a sincere person. He took his word. So, I mean, Gotta he did learn stop not to his, do that. Yeah. Xavier believed in him. He likes the guy. You know, he's had a hard life. Um, Have you had a hard life? He's had a hard life. No, no, no. Let him answer. I don't think I've had really a, a hard life. I mean, everybody has their struggles in life. How do you have a, a hard life? I heard about gate one, gate two, management companies that manage your money. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the hard life? I mean, do, what, does, that make, does that make a perfect life? Yeah. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it certainly isn't the struggle that I've heard all day in this courtroom. I mean, well. What, but, but what are you doing now? I DJ. I are travel. You a DJ? Yeah, I DJ, that kind of stuff. Okay. You, would you go back to training him? Absolutely. Uh, I just, um, the thing is this. I'm here. I like the guy. I have nothing to say against him. I like the, the whole thing. Just I used to call the house. I called Sean many times. He, didn't, he avoided my phone call. He didn't take my call. I, I tried to call Rod. I called the management company. I went to see the management company. I was so frustrated because I felt that I was being, you know, like it was a cat and mouse situation. I didn't worry too much because his, his dad cut me a check to pay for my other, you know, expenses. So I say, and you used to tell me, don't worry, my dad's going to pay you. I believe the guy. Did you, did you ask your dad to pay for you? Actually, I did. And what I actually, say? with the money that he gave, sent, the check that he sent Xavier, I actually had to pay back. My to... dad's very cheap. <laughs> your dad's very cheap? Oh. Yeah, so I, I actually paid for my own money. stuff. a lot of money. Why is he cheap? I don't know. The issue for this court is a very simple issue. That's whether or not the defendant is obligated to pay the plaintiff for services rendered by the plaintiff, services being personal training sessions. I think that the plaintiff has uh, exhibited a certain kindness in continuing to train the defendant in spite of the fact that he wasn't getting paid. As a result, uh, the, uh, the, the defendant is clearly under an obligation to pay the plaintiff. But when I talked about mitigation of damages, uh, Francois, what I was talking about is your obligation to somewhat cut back by not allowing uh, uh, Sean to continue to take you for the money, irrespective of what has happened in the past. And so I'm not going to give you all of the money that you're requesting, because at some point you've got to say, I am somewhat responsible for the, my own damages. Now, I believe that, uh, that, I, that you are responsible for $3,500, Sean, to pay the plaintiff. And I'm taking off $700. I mean, at some point you had to pull back. Now, at the end of the day, uh, your failing to repay or to pay for services can cost you a lot of trouble. It can affect your credit. It's going to affect other people wanting to do business with you. You've got to learn how to do this and not let it be prolonged. Uh, now, lost wages are not something that you can recover for under this uh, cause of action. It is not something for which you can get any money. But I think that the good news is that the two of you are still friends, and I think at the end of the day, you'll probably start training him again. Right. Verdict for the plaintiff. If you grow up to pay his bill, 